realize on a big scale the possibility to truly personalize the treatment of metastatic breast cancer, first to analyze genomic, uh, uh, the genomic situation of um, metastatic breast cancer, and second to draw consequences out of it in a therapeutic way. So this is uh, probably uh, in this context um, the most important trial that was uh, presented until now and um, will be will be presented now by Dr. Anedos, who is from the Institut Gustave Roussy in uh, Villejuif, France. Thank you. As a member of the steering committee, I would like to share some of the data that is going to be presented in much more detail this afternoon by one of the other members, authors, which is Professor Andre. So actually for us, what we wanted to do with this trial is just to, in our metastatic breast cancer patients, to do biopsy of the metastasis, then to look at the whole genome to see if we could identify any molecular alterations and try to match these molecular alterations with the targeted therapy for each of our patients. In this study, we try to answer to three questions. First, which is the best technology to look at the whole genome? The second is that which one is the algorithm, which is the best way to try to identify these molecular alterations? And of course, the most important is that does this approach improve outcome in our patients? So this is why we designed the SAFIR program. Before we started the SAFIR 01 trial, we performed at the Institute Gustave Roussy what we call a pilot study, a pre-SAFIR study in 108 patients. And we performed the same whole genome analysis to see if it was feasible. Once we determined that this was feasible, is this when we started this French national program, which has been sponsored uh, by the UniCancer, and the funding has come from the French National Cancer Institute, in which patients with metastatic breast cancer, where the disease was under control at the moment of the inclusion of the trial, were offered to have a biopsy of one of metastatic signs. Then this biopsy was, in this biopsy we perform what we call a race EGH, meaning we look at the whole genome, we check which genes are increased and which genes are decreased in this tumor, and also we perform mutations in two specific genes that are very important in breast cancer, which are P. kinase and also AKT. The inclusion um, specifically was uh, initially around 400 patients. That was initially we thought that it would take us around three years. Actually, it took us only one year. And this is a way to show the expectation of this type of approach, not just only for clinicians, but also for our patients. At the moment of the progression of disease, meaning when the patient is no longer under control with the current standard treatment, we look at the molecular alterations and within a committee that involves the 18 investigational centers across France, we try to choose a match therapy within or outside the context of a clinical trial. And if it's in a clinical trial, in any of these uh, investigational centers across the whole France. So from the 393 patients that we can, we have some data. So we were able to perform whole genome analysis, meaning both these gains and losses by the rate GH and the mutational status in 251 cases. On these patients, we found molecular alterations in 69% of them. And when I say molecular alterations, I mean targetable molecular alterations. So molecular alterations for which we might have a targeted, a directed treatment against them. And very important to say that 76 of these uh, are considered a low frequency, meaning very rare molecular alterations, that they are not usual, consider, um, you know, usually not much or not um, seen in breast cancer patients because they are very, very rare. So far, and these are preliminary results, we have treated 26 patients based on these molecular alterations. And so far, we have seen already eight patients that in which we have seen some evidence of activity with this match therapy. Remember that this is preliminary data, so this is only on the first year. There are patients on a treatment that is controlling the disease, so therefore, for most of our patients, 
they, they hasn't been still the need of trying to find this targeted therapy of this investigational agent. We are expecting in a period of total of three years to have treated with much therapy at least 80 patients. So uh, for us, uh, this is the first large prospective study that evaluates the role of the whole genome technologies for cancer care, specifically we'll look at in breast cancer patients. And what we have shown is that performing whole genome analysis across uh, the different centers, it's feasible that they produce robust results, that they allow us to look at the whole genome in only one assay, instead of the standard way, which is performing one different assay for each molecular alteration, which of course, these assays that are not thought for very rare molecular alterations because these are not expected. So we are able to identify this very um, unexpected in breast cancer, but yet targetable molecular alterations, and we have seen some early signs of clinical activity. So for us, this study suggests that this is time to bring personalized medicine into the cancer field. Of course, we acknowledge that there is room for improvement. We can decrease, we have to try to decrease the, um, the rate of the biopsy failure. So during the process of this trial, we modified, we amended our protocol to limit both biopsies because we had some issues performing molecular analysis in, this, um, in these biopsies. But especially, we have to improve access to targeted agents. Especially in the context, we believe that especially outside of the context of a clinical trial, it's important to create a process to allow these patients with very specific molecular alterations to have free access to these drugs within the context of an academic study. Our next steps, which are currently ongoing, we are already performing next generation sequencing to all of these patients that they have been included in the trial to check which technology is best. And also, we are going to do the SAFIR02 program, which is a randomized study, which is going to randomize targeted therapy versus not targeted therapy. And it's the decisions that are going to be made based on findings in next generation sequencing. And we are due to start this program within this next year. Thank you.